name is Sebastian and in this video I want to show you how to become better at the keyboard, especially as a software developer. We're using the keyboard a lot and I'm not just talking about touch typing, that is one thing that you should be able to do and to focus on, but in general how can we just optimize to get better at the keyboard, to get faster and to sort of not break that flow experience when you have to look down and search for keys and well of course to have a better experience in general. So what is to be said about that? First of all, the touch typing, that notation um, that we have means, well, that you should be able to type without looking down, without looking at your keyboard. And the way how you do this, well, there are some haptical dots um, usually on your keyboard with F and J, the so-called home row, and well, how to get better at that. So first of all, I want you to have a better feeling for the keyboard, and it's definitely required that you can type without looking down. So first of all, to get started, when you're sitting in front of your computer, ideally now, you can do this while watching this video, just take your keyboard without looking down, like what I do right now, and then just place your hands somewhere and move around and trying to sort of navigate, trying to get a feeling where you are without looking. So especially you should then quite quickly find your home row that is F and J, with these haptical dots that you have, so you should have some sort of marker and then align your fingers accordingly in the so-called home row. So that's very important. If your keyboard is older and you don't feel these haptical dots anymore, doesn't matter, you can take a sharp object and just mark them. That's actually what I did on my old laptop. So just, you know, to be able to feel them um, better and that I don't have to buy a new keyboard just for that. And then you can arrange yourself. So that is really important. And then of course, well, you should be able to type at least the usual characters and letters without looking. So there are a lot of trainers out there and you know, there are online applications in which you can train and get your word count and things like that. I actually don't use them a lot. I would say just, you know, code, just like practice while doing it, by doing your work without looking down. And that's already quite interesting um, yeah, to have a look at. Now, what we uh, can see also Depending on the keyboard that you have, there might be a lot of differences. So, of course, keyboards are standardized, but especially when we look into laptops, they have quite different setups. And there are some setups that, you know, differ quite a bit with, uh, with regards to being able to navigate. So what I just said with this exercise, if you now have a look at, that's a, an old ThinkPad keyboard. Actually, the new ThinkPads look a little bit differently. But the reason why I'm uh, putting up an old one is that here you have just like a slightly different setup. You see, all of the keys have sort of this uh, like a mark, like a small valley in which you can feel the keys themselves. So you don't, you're, you're less likely to accidentally hit a wrong key. But also there are some marks that you can just feel quite easily. For example, F, F1 to 4 is in one block and then you have a small gap. And if you move over your keyboard with your hands, then you feel this, right? And the same is true for some other keys here. They all have some slightly different a different haptical experience. Here, for example, on the cursor arrows, you also, maybe you see this, they have small um, marks as well, different marks, and the other keys are shaped differently. So when you just slide over it without looking, you feel actually where you are. And not all keyboards do this, unfortunately. Actually, the newer models, uh, models are worse um, than, uh, at that than, than they were, while well, the keyboard experience is different, but these marks aren't that obvious. And there is something to be said about this type of keyboard in which you can just you know, feel everything and these haptical things and to get used to it without looking. So really spend some time with the keyboard that you have and then you know, get a feeling for, uh, for it without looking. So you should definitely you know, be able to to move around and do stuff, especially always the jumps starting from the home row here, F and J, that from there, you know, you can navigate again to wherever you need to go. And for example, hit, you know, the delete button here, which is also shaped differently for this particular keyboard to, you know, jump there without looking. So that's kind of helpful already. What's also important, especially on a laptop keyboard here, usually you have some sort of functional key, you know, FN and then control. Some of them are, well, either they only have control like the uh, standard layout or they are swapped that there's first control and then FN. That's a little bit tricky because then if you switch keyboards quite often and especially switching from the laptop to a different laptop or to your non-laptop keyboard, then you know your your key, your movement of usually um, your uh, fifth uh, finger of your pinky is then 
slightly differently. You know, you, you might move over there instead of down there and things like that. So that's also something to keep in mind, uh, which is actually for the keyboard that I'm using. Well, I will show you in a second. I took quite quite amount of time to figure this out. What is just ideal for me, especially if I switch back to my uh, laptop while on the road. To keep typing on that so that's also something to be considered when you buy a new keyboard if you have a look at the mechanical keyboard and then to see you know what makes sense for you for your particular setup and that differs a little bit what you've been used to in the past so just keep this in mind that these all tiny small hand movements might make a difference now for mechanical keyboards or just keyboard devices First of all, what I would really recommend is to spend some time uh, on it or at least to, you know, have the idea that this is important to get a proper keyboard device, especially in your office where you have a, you know, constant office setup. If you have one like in your office or in your home office, um, because it just makes sense to have some sort of uh, device there. I just quickly want to show you what I started out with. That is actually this brand um, is an American brand with the German name this keyboard and especially this model which is kind of interesting because this comes with well no keycaps which is another uh, tip I have actually because well a lot of you might be quite familiar with touch typing but question can you also type the numbers without looking right if I say 137 can you type this number without looking down or without slowing down a lot so basically that means am I able to feel on which number I am and then you just have to be quite consistent with, uh, consistent with which finger you use in order to reach that number to actually be able to type numbers quickly without switching to the num block if you have one or you know without looking down or breaking your flow so that's another great exercise so that's the reason why i actually advocate for getting a keyboard without a description without a um, blank key so here you see also that my keyboard doesn't have any description also because I like to swap some of the modified keys, but that's that's a different story. Uh, but then it really forces you to get used to it because you, you cannot look down. You sort of can count and in the beginning it will be some learning curve and you will be slower, but it really pays off. So the same you know, is true for the functional uh, keys here. Then you can just type them without looking after a while. Okay, so that's uh, kind of interesting. But the keyboard layout or the keyboard that I'm using right now is this one, uh, so-called ultimate hacking keyboard. That is a different, um, yeah, different interesting idea or reason. And I quickly want to point out why I don't want to make any advertising for that or say that you even have to have such a keyboard. But um, the reason why this one makes me faster is actually that it can reduce this sort of haptical feeling of moving on uh, around on the keyboard. Why? Because while it doesn't have the typical, what we uh, have here, the typical cursor arrows or um, these uh, num blocks or the um, delete, uh, insert, um, home and things like that block here, but instead you type a different key, such as a different modifier, almost like a different layer, and then you can type them in your usual uh, key setup. So it's not just about this ultimate hacking keyboard. What I'm using, there are other modules uh, like that. I'm not even talking that much about the split layout. Yes, it is a split layout, but I typically don't care that much about it. You could also have a similar layout just without the split. Um, this is the program that it comes with to just quickly show you how I'm using that. So basically, if I press that modifier key and again, you should have an idea of where you typically locate, you know, your thumb and your pinky for accessing these modifier keys, because it makes a difference if you go down there or down here, some of which might be more or less convenient for you. So that's the reason why I have this in that arrangement. And then for the modifier layout here, for example, I can hit the cursor arrows with the typical Vim binding without, you know, breaking that uh, breaking that flow without moving down. And then I have to either look down or slide and feel, OK, where are the cursor arrows? So sort of this is, you know, the next next level that you say, OK, you don't even have to move around. And the same is true, as you can see here for the functional keys or anything like uh, home, delete, insert and things like that. Um, that just makes you much faster than. Of course, there's a learning curve involved. And of course, this only makes sense if you spend a lot of time in a setup that you control, you know, for the hardware. So if you're on the road all the time, this makes less sense, which is only why I 
I actually got a different keyboard like this in 2020 when I, uh, since now almost exclusively in my home office. So then this makes sense and you know, you have a little bit of a different uh, experience there. The same is true for some sort of mouse integration that you can uh, move in this regard. But ultimately, that's not the point which device you use here. It's really much more um, about what you're used to and the, that you get um, a feeling for these, you know, hand feelings and the muscle memory and especially to practice that to be able to press the keys and maybe, you know, jump the, to different locations if you have to on the keyboard without looking. So that's quite crucial and that's a great way uh, to practice that. So first of all, to not look down or if you have to, you know, um, to just change your, uh, your keyboard to have no, no caps, to have no description. And then, you know, you have to get used to them quite quickly. You can also, you know, um, place it somewhere in your desk that you don't, uh, that you can't uh, look down. You might have a cover or whatever to just, you know, force you to get uh, used to that. But basically, instead of to, uh, using some training tool, I would just code and try, you know, to get used to it without looking down. So that's uh, quite helpful. Then for different uh, keyboard layouts, I'm actually not using a different uh, keyboard layout such as Dvorak or Colmac and things like that. The reason for that is uh, that they then are not quite compatible with all of the keyboard uh, concepts like keyboard uh, shortcut concepts. For example, you know, uh, certain things make sense to be located on the left half of the keyboard to be accessed with one hand while you're using the mouse and things like that. And if you switch uh, swapping the keys around a lot of things, you know, like control C and V uh, don't make sense anymore uh, with a different uh, layout. So that's why I'm using a US keyboard layout. And I have another uh, video on that why uh, if you're not from um, an English speaking country or not from the US um, or not from a country that uses this layout, why you should use a US uh, keyboard layout with international um, layout for if you need to uh, type some other keys. So that's also an interesting um, practice or an interesting idea. And all of that uh, being said, practice to get better at the keyboard, spend some time there. There are some small tips that might uh, help you in this regard. And you should definitely as a developer be able to type without looking and also to type numbers and pretty much all of the special characters and everything on your keyboard in a very quick way without looking down and without breaking a lot of uh, flow by changing these hand movements. So I hope this was helpful. If you're more interested in developer productivity content, I have a lot on my blog and on my channel and also video course on this topic. So if you want to check this out, link in the description down below. And as always, thanks a lot for watching. Bye.